Hey guys, Cam here from PhoneDog.com and for the last week or so I have been using this. This is the Yola smartphone made by a company from Finland running an operating system called Sailfish. Very unique, very different, but is it worth the outlay? Before I get into the review, let's thank our friends at Best Buy Mobile. They regularly supply us with phones to give away in our one port bandit game over at PhoneDog.com. So give that a spin and see if you can win. Now onto the device itself. Now let's take a look at the hardware design. It is very unique. Dimensions wise, it's 131 by 68 by 9.9 millimeters and weighs 140 grams. So it's very much middle of the road. And that kind of goes for a lot of the other specs that we're gonna get into later. But the design is quite unique. It has this two tone sort of two part design. Now the main body of the phone is pretty predominantly made of metal with a really nice elegant sheer piece of glass on the front whereas the back that is what they call the other half it's a polycarbonate shell but it's not just any polycarbonate shell it's equipped with an NFC chip which when matched with the NFC chip built into the back of the phone tells the phone you have put the white polycarbonate other half on your phone and then it asks you if you want to switch to the white color matching theme on the phone to match your other half. Now you can buy other color other half cases. Put those on the back of your phone then obviously it will ask you if you want to download and install a matching ambient scene or theme on your phone and that NFC chip in the back of the phone can be used for a lot more. There are wooden cases you can buy with solid wood, bird's eye maple, some really nice woods. Also one thing they showed off at MWC was the fact that you could attach a physical keyboard so you can have like a keyboard case on there. So it is really rather unique and very clever. One other thing I noticed that I found rather odd and quite nice was that the top half of the phone has curved edges on the left and the right, whereas the bottom half or the other half has completely flat left and right and curved on the top and the bottom. It kind of gives you that impression that you've got two pieces of material facing opposite ways to each other and it makes it certainly look different to anything else on the market. It feels solid and light and really quite comfortable to have in your hand and it only has two buttons on the phone. It's got the power and lock key and your volume rocker on the right hand edge and that's it. And that's because of the operating system is completely gesture based. With hardware for now and take a look at the display. It's a four and a half inch QHD display. It has a resolution of 960 by 540 so it's definitely not the sharpest display on the market. It does have Gorilla Glass 2 on the top which means you should have your phone protected from most scrapes and bangs from daily use but the display technology itself is neither here nor there. The viewing angles aren't tremendous, they're good, but you will notice that once you start tilting it then the level of brightness completely drops and it gets even worse when you go outside into daylight. It's really not very good outdoors. But indoors there's enough colour, enough contrast, enough, enough brightness to make the use of your phone actually fairly palatable. It's clearly not the sharpest so I would never go as far as to saying it's one of the best phones and best screens on the market but it's not the worst either. Battery life on the Yola smartphone is pretty good as well. It's equipped with a 2100 milliamp hour battery and on most days with regular use I would quite happily get about a day and a half use out of the battery. Onto the camera is an 8 megapixel camera with autofocus and the actual camera interface is actually quite nice because you do get a good level of controls. You can change the exposure, you can change the white balance, you can change if you want to have a grid on there to help you line things up into the third lines, but the performance is neither here nor there really. I could take some pretty good shots outdoors in daylight, but once you get indoors into lower light situations, you start to see a lot more graining and it struggles to focus. So if you're a big photography nerd, this probably isn't the phone for you. Now onto Sailfish OS itself. Now it's important to note that Yola and the operating system itself came from Nokia originally. Some ex-workers from the Nokia factory went and started their own company. And it was born sort of out of the Mego operating system that you found on the Nokia N9. And that's why the icons may look quite familiar to you. And the gesture based user interface is kind of familiar as well, except that it does take a lot of getting used to. Because there are no buttons on the phone, you have to use gestures on the screen, normally with just one digit with your thumb. So if you unlock your phone by swiping up, you get to your main screen and this is sort of your home screen. It'll show you sort of Blackberry 10 style cards. 
and it'll show you which apps are running and it'll show you a brief overview, sort of like a widget, and it'll show you what's happening on that app. It's not actually running or using any of your phone's memory, but it's there and it remembers. To get to your apps and to launch apps themselves, you can scroll up again and then you'll see your familiar grid of app icons. And once you're in an app is where it kind of gets a little bit confusing. To actually do anything within an app, whether it's sending messages on Messenger or creating an email, you have to press and hold on the screen and then scroll down. And when you scroll down, you'll then see a menu appear on the top of the display and then you can choose which of the actions you want to perform. To get back to your home screen, you can swipe left or right from the edge of the display. Now that's what you kind of have to look out for with Sailfish, is that you have these dots on the top of the screen that tell you when you can slide left and right within the app. Otherwise, if you slide left or right, again, it will just take you to the home screen. Once you get used to the operating system and the way it works, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's fantastic, it's unique and it's different, and it's nice to have something that's completely gesture-based, but it could do with some revamping to make it a little bit more user friendly. And the operating system isn't helped any further by the fact that there are very few native apps available for Sailfish. If you go into the Yola store, most of the apps that are there are made by Yola themselves, and there aren't many third-party developers creating any useful apps for the phone. There are some very basic apps for things like eBay and Twitter, but they are far from being great apps. But it's not all bad news because you do get Android support, so you can install Android apps. If you select to download Android support, you'll get the Yandex Store. Now, the Yandex Store is where you'll get all of your Android apps and you download them, and they're not fantastic, but at least it's better than having nothing. But sadly for me, I didn't once get the Yandex Store to work. I did get another one called Aptoid to work, but the selection of apps in there was very, very minimal. Now onto the performance, and it's another one of those cases where it's just okay. There's nothing really to sing and dance about here. It's a middle-of-the-road phone, and it performs like one. Sometimes opening apps is slow, sometimes it's generally quite smooth and fluid. I would never have said that it's really, really quick and fast because it isn't. Opening some of the native apps is generally quite good, but opening the browser is quite slow and actually navigating the browser I found quite frustrating. Powering the device is a 1.4 GHz dual-core Qualcomm processor, so it's nothing like the quad-core processors that you'll get on a lot of phones that run Android. And here's the thing, as a sort of wrap-up, Unless you're really looking for something different and unique and you want to support an independent company or you're just curious and you're fed up of the norm, you don't want to use Android and iOS or Windows Phone anymore, you want to try something different, then Yola is certainly something worth considering. The phones cost €349 Euros, and at the moment they're only available in Europe. But if you're wanting a great phone in the mid-range that does everything you want it to do and you want great apps and great service, great performance, then really Yola probably isn't your best option. You're better off going with something like the HTC One Mini 2 running Android, which is one of the best mid-range smaller phones on the market. So that's been my review of the Yola smartphone. Definitely an interesting phone, definitely something that you should look into if you're a bit of a phone nerd, especially if you just want a change from your operating system. I've been Cam, I'm at phonedog underscore Cam on Twitter, and I will see you again soon.